Uh, Liz joined uh, Fox Business Network uh, in September of uh, 2007. Prior to that, she was a senior editor at Forbes magazine, where she covered stock market and earning news, a frequent guest on the Fox News Channel, uh, appearing on Forbes on Fox and Your World with Neil Cavuto. Prior to joining Fox, Liz covered um, uh, stock market earnings and accounting abuses for the Wall Street Journal's money and investing section uh, with front page stories and heard on the street columns. Uh, prior to that, she was uh, an editor with Worth Magazine and covered the IRS and taxes for Money Magazine. Uh, she's recognized as one of the top prize winning business journalists in the country, having received uh, 14 uh, awards for her business journalism. And with that, uh, Liz. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, just give me a second while I get mic. This is what I have to do every day. So, mm -hmm. where's the clip for this? Yeah. You walked away with a clip. No, it's not I'm clip. teasing it. I'm sorry. Well, <laughs> you kind of poke it into your. You're going to poke me? I don't know. If you, no. you just the other way around. <laughs> I think if you poke it. Yeah. This way? Yeah. This is high tech. Yeah, it's high tech. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway. Do yep, I really look like <laughs> <laughs> Well, that goes for that. We'll try to. I'm sure the, the camera will pick up my big mouth and what I have to say. You no, know, I just got upset. You know, what a crazy day in news today, all right? Did you see Air Obama doing the flyover of Lower Manhattan? <laughs> what was that about? That was insane. What was that? And then he had, you know, this swine flu outbreak. I mean, I'm covering today Bank of and Bernanke, and now Mary Shapiro. I mean, swine flu. And now I feel like every morning I, I, I hope I wake up from a fever dream, right, with Arab Obama flying over the Manhattan for a photo op. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, so this fight is a good one. This sets a tone, I think, what's going on with Bank of America. Now, Mary, did you hear about this, what's going on with Bank of America's fight with Ben Bernanke and Henry Paulson? Did you hear this one? All right, so what happened was, uh, uh, Ken Lewis goes down to Henry Paulson and Ben Bernanke in Washington and said, look, I don't want to buy Merrill Lynch. This is a dog. I'm going to invoke the, uh, this merger clause that says I want to walk out. And they said, no, you have to buy Merrill Lynch. Right? You've got to buy it. Uh, and they said, if you don't buy him, buy Merrill Lynch, we're, you know, we're going to can you. We're going to remove your management. So he testified to Cuomo. Cuomo took some testimony. And he said that, you know, now the shareholders are saying, wait a second, why didn't you even tell us that you were going down to Washington to invoke the merger clause to get out of the deal? He didn't tell them that. He waited a month to tell them about the losses. Now we have Mary Shapiro, you know, weighing in saying, look, it, but by the way, uh, uh, Ken Lewis uh, to Cuomo said, you know, I, I didn't disclose, I didn't think I, I should disclose Merrill Lynch's losses, really, or the CEO. And, uh, you know, so he's basically saying um, it's their fault. He's blaming the government. This is amazing. When did we ever think? I mean, a year ago, we're all complaining about that $100 million bridge to nowhere, and then this thing blows up. So I had one guy, he's a trader down on Wall Street, he loves watching, and he said, Lizzie, it looks like, you know, there's, uh, when you think about it, it's Paulson, Bernanke, and Ken Lewis, and now Mary Shapiro saying that Bank of America should have disclosed. He said, it's sort of like a, watching a boxer have a fight with a Great Dane and a Boston Terrier and an Afghan hound. I guess you had to be there, though. I thought that was kind of funny. But anyway, so what are we, where are we? We're, we've got a bailout where, you know, t Washington is blindly signing, you know, taxpayer checks in a panic. This pell-mell chaotic fire brigade closing down Wall Street with taxpayer money because Wall Street, you know, basically went berserk with all their bad bets on a government to serve time to come. And we're, one, you know, we're all looking for the end of this bear market. We're looking for every rally is the end of the bear market. And one guy, uh, one of my Wall Street guys, he said, look, the only, it, so everybody's saying this is the end of the bear, this is the end, we're at the bottom. And one uh, economist said to me, Lizzie, I have to remind you of this quote from John Kenneth Galbraith. He said, the only function of economic forecasting is to make astrology <laughs> Look respectable. <laughs> I love that quote. Sorry. Anyway, I do digress. So anyway, let's get to Judge Posner. And by the way, Peter Wallison is here. Let's give a let's get a round of applause. This is great.
his academic work has uh, covered a broad range with particular emphasis on the <coughs> and economics of the law. Posner is the author of nearly, nearly 40 books on jurisprudence, and his most recent book is The Failure of Capitalism, The Crisis of the Weight, and The Descent into Depression. Am I right, Judge? Am I right? Okay. Move right along. He received a number of honorary degrees and other awards, including the Thomas C. Schelling Award for Scholarly Contributions that have had an impact on public policy from the John F. Kennedy School of Government at Harvard, uh, Harvard University, and the Henry J. Friendly Medal from the American Law Institute. And Judge, am I right in saying that you helped start the law and economics movement while a professor at the University of Chicago? Is that, is that right? Well, I contributed to it. It started it. All right. Anyway, without further ado, sophisticated. You figured it out? No. Maybe I don't. I need to try this. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Is it turn? How is this? Is this better? Yes? That's for the videotape, basically. No? Bend over into the microphone. My mouth is an inch? That's better. Okay, I'll, I'll try. All right. Pull up the mic? What do you mean? I can't get it much closer to my mouth. That's fine, Judge. Is this okay? Okay. All right. Okay. Okay, so what I'm going to do uh, first, I, I will offer my diagnosis of our economic uh, situation, and then I'll, I'll comment briefly on Mr. Wallison's, and I'll explain my understanding of his approach and why I disagree, and then he'll tell me, you know, I, why I'm wrong. So, so here's my diagnosis. Um, the essential thing you have to understand, I believe, is that banking is inherently a very risky activity. And you don't want to be fooled by those, by its uh, stolid architecture, its solid architecture, its Roman looking buildings. That's just to, that's, that's just to make you think that banking is a really solid conservative activity. It's inherently risky. And the reason it's inherently risky is that what banking basically involves, and other financial intermediation, there really isn't that much difference anymore between the various types of financial intermediary. Insurance companies, hedge funds, money market funds, and so on. They're, they're much like banks. So, But the essence of banking is that you borrow your capital, you borrow most of your capital, and then you lend it out. And that means that you know you borrow, you have to pay to get the to get the capital, and you have to turn around, oh. and then you have to turn around and somehow uh, make money by lending what you've borrowed. So in other words, you have to pay a lower interest rate than the interest rates you charge. And the standard way in which banks do that, not the only way, I may have to oversimplify, <laughs> is that you borrow short and you lend long. 